Next up, we're going to add some snow, and this is where the mountain starts looking cool. We are going to take our palette knife, and we're just going to make a minor adjustment to it. And because making mountains is pretty fun, I'm going to save this as its own brush again. I'm going to say BR palette knife, and I'm going to call it snow. And the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to add a pattern here. So just take a look at what this knife looks like now. It looks like this. It does have some open areas, some of those dots, and that's because in our brush tip, you can see here, it's not fully solid. That's controlled by this density, 83%. Just another one of these settings you can fool around with. 83 is what it's at. If I change it to 100, it's going to be solid. And if I change it back to 83 or wherever it was, I'm going to get those dots again. And you can see if you look there as you change this, a really lowly, really low density brush there. But I want to add a pattern. So what a pattern is going to do is it's going to force your brush to draw in certain areas and not in other areas based on a texture that you provide it. Right now it has this gray, which you can't really tell what's going on. But if we pick something obvious, like this, let's scroll up to the top and we'll pick, uh, let's pick this wavy pattern here. I'm not sure what that is. It says here, wave flex. Okay, and I'm gonna turn on patterns. I'm not gonna bother with any of these settings right now. And I'm just gonna draw and let's see what happens. Can we see it? Not really, okay. Let's pick another one. Let's pick these, scroll down here, let's pick these stars. What about that? Oh yeah, you can totally see that. So there's our pattern. We're drawing in that pattern. And another obvious one, like some scales. These are all different sizes as well. Some pretty cool effects. But we just want something to add a little bit of texture to mimic Bob Ross's shaky hand there when he scrapes along with his white to create the snow effect. And a nice one to do that is if you scroll up to the top, you're going to find two rocks, texture rock number 14 and number 15. And choose either of these. They're going to look great. And now you're going to get a just a slight texture, which you can see underneath there. That's going to make our mountain snow look really cool. That's the only thing I'm going to change. I'm going to, before I save it, I'm going to reload the brush and I'm going to I want to draw in white though on here just to change it a little bit so I know the difference between my brushes but I cannot draw on white I'm going to show you one more thing here about this brush engines window and that is we can detach it if I right click over in this area here I get an option to detach this window from the toolbar and now it's separate and I can work on it and I can do things like change colors while I'm working on it we do lose our preview window there, so if I go back here and right click, I can show the scratch pad there, that's what it's called, and I'll get my scratch pad back. And now, not only can I switch colors, I can switch brushes. Of course, I hadn't saved that yet, so I lost my settings. Luckily, the only thing we did was we turned on a pattern and we chose one of these rock textures. Okay, so let's load up our default icon and I'm just gonna add, I don't want blue, I want white. Load that up again and I'll just add some, some sort of white there so you know it's the snow. It doesn't have to look good, I just need to know in the pop-up. And in the pop-up you can barely see it anyway. All right, let's call this BR Palette Knife Snow. Save to presets. Let's go add that from the presets button in the toolbar. BR pad's already selected, that's great. If not, you can just search BR. I'm gonna right click there and I'm gonna assign to the Bob Ross tag and there it is. And you can see it a little bit, so now I can tell the difference between the two. So let's add some snow. Remember that I've turned the tilt off because I suspect many students will not have that ability. If you do, you should practice it. It's really cool. It's much easier to do. But for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the top here 
and I'm going to, with quite a bit of pressure, I'm going to drag down and create some ridges on this mountain. Something like that. It's a little bit long, Control Z. You might want to try this a few times. I'm going to go to the top, and maybe a little less pressure, actually, and do something like that. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Same thing over here. Should be the same angle as our brush currently is. That helps us out a bit. And this one, I'm going to go a little bit more smooth there. Now, here's a problem, is I want to turn my brush, and I can't. So, here's a neat way of faking it. What we can do is we can rotate the canvas in lieu of rotating our brush. We can do that with the 4 and the 6 keys on the number pad or above the keyboard. If I hit 4, I'm going to be rotating it 15 degrees left every time I hit it. And if I hit 6, it rotates to the right. Now, me being left-handed, I got my pen in my left hand and my hand on my right hand on the number pad. That's pretty sweet. So now I'm going to rotate slightly and just fill some of this in with color. And here, just rotating back and forth here. Remember, I don't want to lose my sharp top edge and just adding some of this texture in. And now I can smooth this out. There we go. Nice. And this one's a bit sharp here, so let's, let's add some ridginess to it. And here we can fill this in with color. You can just kind of draw in here. It's going to look good. We're going to smooth that out. We'll be blending a little bit. Try not to have too many sharp lines. If you want more of a snow field in a section, you can just fill that in. Whoop. Get some circles, different angles, and get some glaciers up there. Do some over on this mountain too. Alright, that looks pretty cool, eh? Actually, zoom out. Actually, you can see it down there. It looks awesome. The last part we need to add are the shadows on the other side of the mountain, which you can see I've already added here. To do that, we're going to mix in a little bit of blue. So with our base color, foreground color of titanium white, I'm going to mix in a bit of phthalo blue. 50-50 mix is good. I'm going to click the mix to make that my active color. And here, I'm going to zoom in a bit and the brush is a bit big. Bob Ross is using the edge of his palette knife, so let's reduce that to about 50 pixels, half an inch. And now what I want to do is I want to keep my brush parallel with the edge of the mountain. I'm going to use those four and six keys to do that, and I'm just going to very lightly brush down like this to create those shadows. We get that cool texture that's making it look pretty good. Just gonna add a little bit down there. This part can be blurred in slightly here. Okay. And that looks good. I already did the other side here, so you can go back and add that in. I'm gonna add a more snowy patch there. You can do that. And you know what? That snowy patch does not look good. Not a happy accident. Okay, that looks fine. Now, I actually made many, many mountains because it's pretty fun. And even though this one took us a bit of time because I was explaining it, once you get the hang of it, you can whip these up in two minutes. So, there's another example, another example, oops, another example, and uh, this top one here is probably my favorite one there. I can stick with that one. That's it for this show. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you next time.